For all the rain that falls in the Pacific Northwest, which is where I'm located, there are days like this in the midst of winter that, as you can probably tell from the ambient light, are beautiful sunny days. But am I out there enjoying the weather? No, I'm back again because it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's been a while. I've been saying that a lot lately. I had kind of a splotchy patch in terms of doing the tournament because um, I've been on a, a vacation at home. I didn't have work for a while and doing the tournament is kind of part of my work schedule. So now I'm back at work again, back doing the tournament again. Um, main reason I keep telling you that it's been a while is just to let you know that if things are a little choppy um, or if I seem like I don't know what I'm talking about uh, more than usual, it's because it's just been a while. Um, but I'm excited to get back into it. Uh, a lot of our real people have fallen down, but I'm picking them back up. I'm setting them back up, and I'm getting my brain acclimated to 7x7 seven seven ages. Let's go! Alright, we had no empires started. We've gone through a brief production and a trade progress phase. The, the notable news is the Plains Americans here, uh, because they have traded with the British, or no, the English. I'm sorry, I know there's a difference between English and British, but it's complicated, I think. Um, uh, but so, anyway, the result of that trade was, well, one, it, it hurt the Plains Americans, but more importantly for them is after you trade with someone who has, like, horses and boats, if you aren't able to use horses and boats, then you are forever after able to use horses and boats. So that's going to be a huge boon uh, for Cowboys, Plains Americans. It would be wise for the Toltecs, Aztecs, who are Runt's North American Empire, to get a similar trade going with the English. They're a little further away, though. Uh, they produce this turn. So they've got, they've got a hefty group there, but um, Cowboy is going to be able to get horses. Midway through the maneuver phase, we have uh, quite a few maneuvers this turn. Um, this, the Spanish are starting to slowly, they've just been maneuvering the last few turns, they're slowly starting to spread into Africa. Uh, not making some progress, but it, it could be a big long-term payoff. Well, some long-term payoff uh, scores on having the most outside of Europe, the most of European countries outside of Europe. So right now she's just competing with the English there, the Spanish, a uh, draft Spanish. A uh, draft was involved in some other action. The Dutch attacked Burgundy. They successfully um, outflanked with this card and with these shields there. Um, the Dutch and just stymied their efforts. The Dutch are, seem to be kind of non-starters right now, which is sad for my grandpa, uh, but oh well. I want to make clear that my grandfather, uh, both of them actually, but the one I was speaking about just now, is actually dead, so he's it's not going to be sad for him. At the tail end of the maneuver phase, we've just had our first capture of the game. This is something that didn't really happen too much before, Partially maybe because of my table here, maybe, I don't know. Um, basically how this works is the more of these shields you have, the more easy it is to capture um, enemy leaders if they're going in your territory. So what happened was uh, Melky, he sent his two leaders, uh, the Dragon Queen and Red River Roy, over here to go after um, Cowboys Phoenician William Wallace. Uh, the Dragon Queen got captured and... Red River Roy did not. So here we have a setup. It's going to be Red River Roy versus William Wallace. Um, I decided to do away with the keys and just have them uh, just start on either side and just do it that way. I feel like that's maybe a little simpler, uh, especially since it's just a one-on-one -on -one battle. Um, Though this game, Duel of Ages, doesn't work as well with one-on-one, -on -one, I think. I, th I think you've got to have a lot of more characters for to have some more interesting dynamics. But this will be fun to see what happens. They both have equipments, equipment cards. Uh, and so they're going to be facing off. No one know They don't know what each other has. And, and so it'll be fun to see. Uh, reminder about why Melky's doing this with his assassins is they get two points every time they kill another person's leader. I'm interpreting this little box differently. Assassinate is a, is a game mechanism in Seven Ages, but I'm going to have it apply to any time the assassins kill anyone, any other uh, leader. They get two points. All right, so we've had a lot of moving back and forth. No real uh, conflict yet. They're, they're staying out of each other's line of sight. Um, 
And it could go on like this for a long time, except that I think Milky and Cowboy are going to talk and agree to have like an old-fashioned shootout. So, um, and Milky's going to propose that shootout, and he's going to give Cowboy the first shot. So Cowboy's going to come down here, trusting that Milky's not going to shoot him. And Milky is not. He's going to just sit there on his turn, except he's going to... Well, hmm, let me think about that. Yes, uh, Melky's going to go with the letter of what he said. He's not going to shoot him, but he is going to um, send a tiger after him. So I don't want to go look for the tiger piece in there, because this is going to be a small combat. Luckily, I have this little die. This will be a tiger. Um, the tiger's going to come at him. William Wallace is going to have to reveal this gun, and it's got a it's, a... it's a pretty good rifle, but he's not very good with them. Um... So he's got blue against the tiger's green. He needs to get a six or better to hit. He got a seven, so he missed the tiger. Tiger is going to come attack him and try to eat him up. Uh, yellow against green needs an eight or better. And he got a nine, so the tiger missed. William Wallace can try to punch the tiger. And he's got yellow against the tiger's yellow. And he missed the tiger as well. So now it's going to be William Wallace's turn to shoot. He's not actually going to be able to shoot now because he has a tiger on him. So I think it's probably in his best interest to run away from the tiger, I guess. So then he can maybe shoot at it again. One, two. Let me go up here. Three, four. I forget. I think that adds... No, it adds three to go up there, right? One, two, uh, three. All right, so that's five. I guess he'll go in the woods here. Six, seven. And then his turn. And tiger will come at him. One, two. Well, the tiger can definitely get him. Uh, so he's going to do an op opportunity fire on the tiger. Uh, and then he's going to come up behind him. One, two, three, four, five. And he's not going to be able to get up. Okay, so he's shooting at the tiger again. And that's blue against the tiger's green. And he missed the tiger. Tiger is going to try to eat him. Uh, he's got yellow against green. And that's an eight. That's a hit. So the tiger does four, potentially. Red against red. And that's going to be a regular hit. So that's four off William Wallace. William Wallace is down to one life. And he gets a chance to punch the tiger back. And he hits the tiger. Ooh. Red against blue. He hurts the tiger. I don't have another damage counter. So the tiger is down to three. So rather than run, Wallace decided to just, uh, well, Cowboy decided that Wallace would just stay and fight the tiger. Uh, the tiger won out. So since the tiger ate his competitor, his target, the tiger goes away. But in exchange, uh, Red River Roy gets another another gun. I say another gun because he already has a gun. And Milky's going to get two points. That's pretty good for him. Uh, just, just to point out the kind of the greater dynamic... Melky's got to be watching Cowboy right now as as his main competitor because after and Cowboy's very likely going to be beating Flush here. Uh, he's moving at a steady clip this way. Um, Melky is going to be the next person he needs to surpass in order not to to lose, and he's getting close. So we've seen a bit of tit for tat between Melky and Cowboy. A draft got in on it a bit, but didn't really work out so well for her. She. Uh, blew up a unit with a volcano there and tried to start a disease, but it only ended up taking out a unit from the Ukraine. Um, what happened with Melky and Cowboy? Well, Melky spread a bunch of disorder, caused a, an uprising among the Plains Americans, and then uh, Cowboy did a couple of things. He was able to uh, steal a card, a very nice card, and you'll see what that is probably in the next little clip here from... Uh, Milky, and then also made him discard some cards and anything else. Um, I think that was about it. But one of the cards he lost was uh, an assassination card, which is unfortunate. That would have been worth some big points for Milky. Three different empires have been discarded this turn. The Harappans, the Ming, and the Han. So that's going to clear out pretty much a big chunk of Asia here. I uh, forgot to move these guys. So, just to remind you of who those people are, the Han were the um, people in China of cowboys. Um, the Ming were cowboys' own people, or sorry, Flush's own people in China, who he kind of used to hammer the Han. 
uh, earlier. And then the Harappans were uh, giraffes, giraffes, big uh, progress-oriented group that she's had for a good chunk of the game. I can't even remember when she got them. It, was, it's, it seems like she's always had them, and now they're gone. She got a lot of cash from it. Um, I give them a coin for every culture card they have just to kind of help them re replenish. Um, that's going to change some things, and it's, you know, I, since I, I chose what everyone did before, you know, it, it's been several days since I did that, I forget what their plans are. I, I think that, you know, all of them have some sort of empire in mind that they want to start. I actually know what Cowboy wants, because I've looked through his hand. He has the Phoenix card, which lets him start one immediately, and he's going to start the Scots here. Pick Scots, he's going to jump them right into Scotland which is an interesting move considering that Melky's English are right south of there. And the English are confronting the uh, Plains Americans, which are also cowboys, so that's going to be fun. Um, let's see, and he, he gets to pick, I guess, any counter set that's available. I think it would be the blues that he has a choice between, uh, light and dark blue. Okay, we have our first empire in the fifth age there in the Phoenicians. Phoenicians still aren't scoring really anything. Um, but they're a nice, I guess, tool maybe for Cowboy. He definitely uh, has some certain power in the game because of them. They just have such a, a rich, deep culture. And for some reason, that that translates into um, some sort of uh, power with the gods here. Um, Melky was actually the highest score this turn. He got 10 total points if you count the two he got for killing um, for Red, Red River Roy's murder of William Wallace. Uh, so he ended up with 10. Cowboy actually didn't score too much overall, except that he, ha he had stolen this card from Melky. If Melky had kept that card, Melky would have jumped ahead even more, because he would have been able to double the score of any one empire. He doesn't have any one strong scoring empire, though. Um, English scored 3, 5. I guess he would have doubled them. That would have given him 5 more points. Spain actually has more external uh, to Europe uh, spaces now than the English, so they get more points from that than the English do. Um, what else? Uh, Runt, even though her two secondary empires, neither of them are scoring very well, the Egyptians are still just raking it in. They get six a turn, and since she's furthest on this track, she's getting an additional one. Um, drafted well, decent score. Uh, Flush did pretty great, pretty okay. He got, I think, seven total, which is still not enough, especially since Cowboy was able to double his score. Let's see, so Cowboy had six, eight, uh, nine points, so he almost tied Milky. He tied, tied Runt, but that was with the help of the I Am Truly Glorious. Things are getting interesting again. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in here. I really don't know what Empire's uh, Giraffe and Flush are. Uh, attempting to start. I think Flush, I don't know that he had a plan because he didn't have any cards in his hand at the start of this turn. Um, Giraffe, I'm thinking she did because to get rid of the Harappans, which was a, you know, two points and a, a deep culture, uh, there must have been something in mind. I hope I didn't accidentally play the card uh, during the civilized actions that the Romans just did, but we'll see next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament 7x7 Ages.